We have an absolute world-class crew, a Grand Prix world-class yacht that we've invested a lot of money in and made some major improvements on with a longer bowsprit, moved the bulb bars. We didn't do that for fun. But this is all out for us. This is no holes barred. It's interesting that this is actually my 30th Hobart, so um, a bit of a milestone. And uh, it's in a one way, it's been the one of the smallest lead time preparation because we were doing the modification that Dave mentioned to the keel and the bowsprit. So everybody in the crew plays a very important role. Stacey's our boat captain, so we rely on her for everything to do with the boat. And Adrian's our navigator, and navigation's more than just getting your navionics out. It's all about weather mapping and should we be here or there, and Coco relies very much on her and yeah. spends a lot of time down below looking at weather maps. And I've got to say, um, it dr was a dream run, and I, I normally, uh, in recent years, have been sailing on maxi yachts, and to actually sail on a 62-footer is a pleasure because it's a big enough boat to be fast, but it's uh, small enough and everything's light enough that you can actually handle it. Yeah, it's been a, a, a really good year for us. We, we, uh, we've had the boat for two and a half years and we, uh, we've been on a, a constant development program to get the boat up to the latest generation and the latest uh, technologies. We came into this, this race uh, w wanting to do well. We had a two to one record against Ichiban this year of, of wins against him. And so, uh, you know, it's pretty even. But his experience, he's got an enormous amount of experience and uh, technology in his boat. So we're always a bit of an underdog. Well, we've, we've, um, we, we've put together a, a very evenly matched crew. We're very compatible. The big things, we've got uh, Rafa Trujillo, uh, the, the dual uh, Olympian and medalist, uh, the Spanish. He's also um, the high performance coach for Australia and he's just got our own Royal Queensland Yacht Squadron sailor, Jake Lilly, into the Olympics again last weekend. Uh, we've also brought uh, one of the, the key uh, helmsmen from the TP Super Series uh, over in Europe, uh, Frenchman uh, Mikhail. He's come on here as a specialist uh, helmsman and he, he brings a great deal to the class in Australia to, so, to show that those professionals come over here and want to do the Rolex Sydney to Hobart yacht race. They love it. It was another challenging race, fantastic fleet out there, um, I think 1252s on the line, so that was our main division we had to really compete against, even though we're alongside the 60s and 70s most of the way, so it's an exciting race. Challenging at times, but we managed to get, a, I think, a fantastic result. Well, it's better than last year, right? <laughs> <laughs> we're heading in the right direction. Exactly. It's like, it's like, it was a great ride, but a lot of fun. Great crew, awesome, awesome there was crew. no issues, no Wade. challenges. Yeah, Wade, where is he? Bob's, oh, where is, there. where's Skip? Come on, man. I mean, pretty warm race, so not too, uh, not too tough as it sometimes is, but uh, certainly we had to enhance our workout efforts with all the 52s, as I just heard the boys saying. That was really our goal, to stay in the hunt through the first trough, stay, uh, stay in the race, basically, which we did, and then uh, be able to attack it a bit further down the course. So we had a good night last night, which put us in a strong spot to maybe you know, attack Ichiban this morning, but you know, we're super satisfied, we're wrapped. Yeah, look, the, you know, they're both great boats, but they're quite different and they, they have different strengths and weaknesses. You know, Quest is a great boat out in the ocean, you know, where she's, you know, her hull form will fit into the waves. We're a little flatter, so, you know, we probably generally go faster, but, you know, in the big seas, you know, Quest is just a much easier boat to sail, probably. We're always looking at Guaylo and, um, and my old boat, which is now called Envy Scooters. So we really kept our eye on, on, on those and, the, and they were always up to different things. And uh, you know, we just kept a bit of an eye on, you know, we had our game plan, we didn't alter our game plan for them, but you, know, but you always do keep an eye on them. And once or twice we almost changed our game plan, but we always decided against it and just stick to our knitting. The, the boat's now two years old, so you know we know a lot more about the boat. You know, there's a, a couple of things we're still making up as we went along in uh, you know, two, 2017. We're always expecting the TPs to go really well in this race, and then the outside chances being maybe boats just a fraction bigger or a fraction smaller than us, or a, or a much smaller boat. And I think we're now into that area where we're looking at the much smaller boats um, to see where they've got a chance. And, you know, those guys are going to be out there pushing hard all night and, uh, and we'll be drinking beer. And we had uh, an interesting race with a number of the smaller boats, um, which was, was probably exciting for them, a little disappointing for us. Uh, going into the first night, the first big hole, 
big game changer transition as it was called period you know we had great leverage on all the tp52s and chinese whisper you know some 30 miles so we're pretty happy with that next morning they were 10 miles in front of us so very unhappy with that situation oh chinese whisper got there first we let them off in the end said good morning to the wild oats boys and we both went like that and it's like you know who'd figure so at that stage they tried inshore and stopped and they tried offshore and stopped and they were heading back inshore while we were heading offshore and it seemed third time lucky they got inshore and got some wind and took off the boat lived up to my expectations more than actually i'm i'm very happy with the boat quite proud of the fact that it was really a whiteboard study of what we believe we could do with the boat to make it improved and so we've, we've got a totally different package what we used to have. First night out we came in I think looking quite strong. Next day was a lot of reaching which really didn't suit us. Uh, then last night we sort of came home, raced really hard through the night, came, woke up this morning and we were uh, you know, back in front again and it was a real tussle to the end. Unfortunately for us, we got caught in Storm Bay. A big, you know, there was nothing, so we sat there and tried to move, and we couldn't get moving. And look, I think you know, Ichiban is you know the boat to beat. It's an incredible program, um, great team, great, great outfit. Um, and some, for some reason, we seem to be the ones that upset them from time to time. And uh, you know, we beat them in the last race in Bird Island. Uh, you know, you know, could have gone either way. I think uh, today. The, uh, my co-owner Bob Steele was unable to make it on the, on the on the boat this time. We he broke some ribs in an earlier race, and uh, you know we really missed him. Yeah. Bob and I were racing uh, 40 foot boats uh, for the last three years, and uh, Bob sold his, and I sold mine around the same time. Now we own Quest. <laughs>